Electrical. So I'm going to be pointing out some less obvious things that someone who's working on their own electrical should know. Just some basic stuff, but this is regarding a water heater that was installed a couple years ago. I'm going to show you the unit and point some things out. Okay, this right here is 12.2 Romex. Now if you see it, normally white Romex nowadays is 14.2. Uh, white 14.2, yellow 12.2, orange 10.2. Um, you can also get 10.3 and 12.3 and 14.3, and that would be for um, having a neutral along with two hots or doing a three way switch or a four way switch. Anyways, but basically 10 gauge is orange, 12 gauge yellow, and 14 gauge is white. So they had this 12-2 coming into the water heater. This is a 4,500 watt single element, 30 gallon water heater inside a mobile home. And they had it going to a 20 amp breaker because that 20 amp breaker is rated for 12 gauge wire. That's good. At least they didn't have a 30 amp circuit with the 12 gauge wire because that means that the 12 gauge wire could potentially melt. Now it's not likely this this 12 gauge wire is rated to about 20 amps and this water heater is probably pulling about 20 amps so it would probably over the life of the water heater in this house never have any problem unless it started arcing um, had bad contact oxidized between the contacts you know uh, that could or if you had aluminum going to copper you could have other issues that would cause heat buildup but in this scenario, more than likely the 12 gauge would be okay. However, it is not proper. Um, you really, and, and the reason being is you really need to have your wire sized according to the breaker, not even necessarily the appliance. Um, the appliance will have its recommendation, which the appliance recommends 10 gauge with a 30 amp breaker, or I believe they say 25 amp, but you're not going to find a 25 amp breaker. So it's right, right around there. And most breakers will flip at about 80% capacity. So if it's a 20 amp breaker, it's really gonna flip maybe closer to 17, 16, 17 amps. Um, that's not the case all the time. Breakers are not, they're not perfectly engineered. They, they do flip at random times, they break. So sometimes it can just be a breaker. It's not necessarily your wire that's, um, you know, or the appliance or whatever you have hooked up. It's just most of the time, if you have a breaker that's flipping, it's going to be from um, too many too many appliances or too many uh, things pulling power on the circuit because it's doing its job and tripping before the wire can melt. So, like if I were to take this 12 gauge wire and stick it um, in between, say, a condenser, an AC condenser and a 50 amp breaker, that wire is going to get so hot, it, the copper inside will literally melt. Um, you don't want that happening. So you've got to use the proper wire size. Now most people know this, but there, there are, you know, people try to wiggle through in the more murky areas like a water heater where it's right around the same amperage. Well, I digress. Back to this install, um, so I've come in and I've put in 10 gauge wire. There's no conduit on it. Mm, you should have conduit on it. I'm not going to, but I'm gonna throw that out there. That I've got a service entrance clamp connector there going down. It is properly grounded. Um, I'm not worried about this unit uh, getting pulled or anything on the wire, but code nowadays wants a junction box and a whip going to the water heater. Now this water heater does need to be strapped and as you can see there is no strapping on it because it's in a mobile home. So like when this mobile home gets moved, if it gets moved, um, it needs to be strapped down. So the water heater needs to be strapped and it needs to um, have conduit junction box on it. Yeah, just gonna throw that out there. It also does not have a pan um, like I said, this unit was installed a couple years ago by the homeowner themselves, and they just hooked everything back up the way it was, um, and it just wasn't installed properly to begin with. Though, 
Yeah. No, I thought maybe I saw some markings for strapping, but no, I don't. Uh, however, this mobile home was probably built 30 years ago. Um, it's an older unit, so um, HUD, HUD home codes were not the greatest or well enforced. All right, coming back around. Okay, so inside the panel. Sorry about all that meandering thoughts, but some of it could be important to someone. Okay, looking inside this panel. Now, they had a 20 amp uh, slimline breaker feeding the water unit, so it just fit right in there. Actually, I moved all of these breakers. It was actually uh, up here on, this is actually where it was, it was at the very top. I moved all these breakers up because some of them were getting um, weren't quite long enough, like this line right here. This guy was pulled pretty tight down to like fourth position, um, and he just didn't have enough line for that. So I moved him to the very top. Um, so, anyways, 20 amp was up here at the top, and all these were down beneath him. Now notice this side. This side has. 30 amp breakers over here uh, for the AC unit and yep both of them are 30 amp and I don't know what the AC unit is most AC units this is a small home most AC units are going to use 50 amp uh, 30 amp 50 amp 40 amp sometimes 60 amp breakers so always make sure that you're keeping your breaker correct but looking at the wire that they've got going in here uh, it does look proper for 30 amp because I believe those are 10 gauge wires and you can see they've got black and red so that means they are carrying neutral which is a good thing to see you can see down here white is coming in with neutral and also should be a copper in there uh, looks like they brought the copper up no no copper in there Okay, well, my hope just faded away. <laughs> well, this one, this one has copper. Okay. Uh, you don't always need a neutral. If the service that you are uh, taking power to needs 120 volts, say it's a, a, a stove that needs 240 volts for the heating element, but then it has a panel for the clock or the timer, that needs 120 volts. That means it needs a neutral so that it can provide 120 volts and also provide ground. It is not proper to take um, a wire to a unit that needs 120 volts and 240 volts without a neutral and a ground. A lot of times you'll see people installing units and they will just have a ground acting as a neutral and no true ground and that is not okay you cannot use a ground as a conductor and neutral is considered a conductor because it is carrying current okay back to this at hand i keep getting distracted so the problem with plugging in one of these slimline just anywhere onto the bar is that you notice right here there is a prong coming from this bar on this side but it's all coming from this side I'm going to remove this breaker here okay so you see right there this bar on this side is providing all of the power now if you follow the bar up it is coming into one side of power coming in. So this is 120 volts, 120 volts coming in. Now there is, this thing's turned off, so it's not transmitting power through these bars, but also the breaker outside is also turned off. Always be redundant with safety features if you can. So 120 volts, 120 volts, going down this bar, going down this bar. If I have my slimline here, plugged in only one bar, it's taking 120 volts and technically making 240 out of it. And it will function, but it's not proper. In order to get 
true 240 volts out of out of a slim line, you need to bridge between the two bars. Okay, so that means putting it in right there. So now I'm connected onto both sides of the bus, here and here. So that means I'm getting true 240 volts through. Now, different electricians will say different things as to how important that is. It's just, you should do it. <laughs> I can't explain uh, the electricity and how it all works behind it. You can always Google that information. But you want to, especially, well, pretty much only on these slim lines, you got to make sure that you're connected to both sides. Uh, with these standard breakers, these regularly sized breakers, it's not an issue because because of their thickness, they're designed so that they will always get onto both sides of the bus. Um, these slim slim breakers work exactly the same. They're no different than these thicker regular breakers. Um, so it's not like one is more powerful than the other. They both do the same exact job. It's just that these slimline breakers open up more space in the panel so you can fit more circuits. Now there will be some slots on a panel where these slimlines are not possible to be, possible to be stuck in place. Um, it looks like this panel you can put slimlines everywhere, but that's not always the case. Sometimes um, the panel will only allow for the regular size breakers. Okay, so we've got our two conductors coming down into our 30 amp and that is going to be plugged in right here and that's just going through back there there is a little washer around there to protect the wires going through and uh, there is ground and since this is a water heater it does not have 120 volts needed it does not need a neutral so you don't need to take a three conductor plus ground wire to it well, this has been a probably a rather boring um, video, uh, but if you are looking for more electrical knowledge, then hopefully this has helped you out. I will talk to you guys later.